Now, before we start today's presentation, I have to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. On Saturday and Sunday, 11 and 12 March 2023, the crew and I will be at the Rick Real Gun Show that's being held at the Polk County Fairgrounds in Rick Real, Oregon. We'll have some guns on display, we'll have some t-shirts, we may tell a story or two that's not fit to be told in this format. Come out and say hi, it'll be fun. Okay, let's get to today's presentation. Hi, we're out on our range today, and we're comparing 22 long rifle and 25 ACP in pocket guns. Now, this comes with a few caveats. First and foremost, today's presentation is a remake of something we did a few years ago. We're remaking it today for a few reasons. One of those reasons is we now have a range facility where you won't have to put up with so much gunfire in the background. I also have what I think will be better testing protocols, or at least more complete protocols. And primarily because I now have the guns to make what I think will be a more fair comparison than we did back then. Now let me see if I can explain that. When you're comparing handguns of two different calibers, you have to have two handguns that have similar barrel lengths. It would not be fair to compare a 38 Special with a 2 inch barrel to a 38 Special with a 6 inch barrel. Well, the guns I had at the time were for 22 long rifle, a Bretta Model 21A, and for 25 ACP, a Colt Model 1908, and a Baby Browning. Now, they had comparable barrel lengths, but there's other factors in play. And just because they were different makes and models does not make the comparison we did then invalid, but I think today we can do a better one. Now, as we've demonstrated in this format before, when I've had two handguns, that were different models, even though they were the same caliber with same barrel length, loaded with ammunition out of the same box, we got different velocities. As where when I've had two handguns with, that were the exact same make and model, with the exact same barrel length, loaded with the exact same ammunition, we got the exact same velocity. So for today, the handguns I'm going to use are, for 22 long rifle, a Beretta Model 21A with a 2 and 3 8 inch barrel. For 25 ACP, a Beretta Model 21A with a 2 and 3 8 inch barrel. You're not going to get any more fair comparison than that. I'm also going to use ammunitions that, although they won't be perfect, they'll be pretty good in terms of making it as fair as I can. Now, the second thing is that I know I'm already getting hate mail from people who are saying things like, which is better, a 22 or a 25? The answer is a 380. I know I'm already getting commentary along the lines of, you shouldn't carry a 25 because if you do, and you shoot someone with a 25, he might find out that you shot him and be mad at you. Or some other nonsense like that. Please keep in mind that I am not in any way advocating any caliber or any course of action. I'm not making any recommendation. We're just comparing the power and effectiveness of these two rounds. Now, the third thing is, there are people who are going to ask questions such as, 22 long rifle is a lot more available than 25 ACP. It's more powerful, or at least they perceive it is. It's a lot less expensive than 25. Why would anyone choose to carry a 25? For that matter, why does 25 even exist? That's a good question, and we will have a discussion on that topic at the end of the presentation. So, until then, let's shoot these two calibers side by side, compare their power and effectiveness, and we'll start with a close-up of what the two ammunitions look like. On your left is a 22 long rifle, and on your right is a 25 ACP. 25 is a bigger number than 22, and you can see that it's slightly larger in diameter, but that does not necessarily mean it's more powerful. You can also see that the 22 is a rimmed casing, while the 25 is a semi-rimmed casing. And the 22 is rim fire, while the 25 is center fire. And now that you've seen what the two cartridges look like, let's do some tedious chronograph analysis. And remember, I leave this segment in the final presentation because so many people ask me to. If you find the chronograph analysis tedious, I invite you to fast forward to the part where you see me standing next to the chart with the numbers on it. Okay, for those of you who are still here, the chronograph is set up at 7 yards. We'll start with the 22, which I have loaded with Remington Golden Bullet 22 Long Rifle 40 grain round nose.
didn't show any reading. 857. 795. 784. 717. 835. And 802. I'm going to reload and shoot a few more rounds. Now let's try a few more shots with our Remington Golden Bullet. 805 and a malfunction. 794 and a malfunction. 662. When a number is that far off, I'm going to have to presume that that's a malfunction on the part of the chronograph. 9 see it didn't fire. It looks like our action didn't cycle. And what we have is the empty round still stuck in the chamber. Now, normally I would edit out, edit it out, screw it like this. There's a reason that I'm leaving this in. What I presumed was a malfunction on the part of the chronograph giving us a velocity that low is actually a malfunction on the part of the pistol. And that is really stuck and I'm going to need a cleaning rod to get that out of there. But either way, our last reading was 662 and this not having ejected shows me that that was a malfunction on the part of that round, not on the chronograph. Now you watched me fumble with my pocket knife trying to dig this empty casing out of there and you might think, why don't I just pull the slide back and use the extractor to pull it out? Because the 21A does not have an extractor. So to get that out of there, I'm going to have to use a cleaning rod and push it out. And there you go. And now let's try our 25. With the 22, we were using Remington Golden Bullet 40 grain. With the 25, I'm going to start out with Remington Green and White Box 25 ACP 50 grain full metal jacket round nose. 730. 750. 776. 773, 751, 760, and 769. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. And of course it comes with the normal caveat that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. Another thing we have to keep in mind is these numbers are probably significantly different than what you'll see in the ballistics chart. You have to read the fine print of the ballistics chart. When you look at the test gun that's used for caliber 25 ACP, it's usually a pocket gun with a two and a half or a three inch barrel. When you look at the test gun that they use for 22 long rifle, you have to remember it's 22 long rifle. The test gun's usually a rifle with a barrel length of 16 inches or greater. Even when the test gun for 22 long rifle is a handgun, it's usually a handgun with a barrel length of somewhere around 6 inches. So the numbers you see in the chart are not a fair comparison. The numbers I got using the exact same barrel length and pocket guns for both are with our Remington Golden Bullet, that's our 22, a mean velocity of 798 feet per second. With the Remington Green and White Box, our 25, 758. So the 22 does have 40 feet per second more. 
and with velocities this low, I'm going to say adding 40 feet per second is significant. However, you have to remember the 22 has a 40 grain bullet, as where the 25 has a 50 grain bullet. So in terms of energy foot-pounds, if I did my math right, with a 22 we have 56, with a 25 we have 63. Seven pounds more, that's negligible. But of all the things we can see in this chart, there's two big takeaways from it. One, the difference in power between 22 and 25 might not be near as much as what you thought it was. And two, although both of these ammunitions are Remington, they're both target ammo, this is what I would consider a fair comparison, it might not be the most realistic because this probably doesn't represent the types of ammunition people are going to be using if they're using these calibers for concealed carry personal protection home defense. So let's go back to the chronograph with some different types of ammo and see what kind of results we get. Now it's the next day, and again I have the chronograph set up at 7 yards, and now I have the Beretta Model 21A loaded with CCI Mini Mag 22 long rifle 36 grain hollow point. Eight eighty one and a malfunction. Eight fifty three. Eight eighty three. Eight twenty two. 8.55 and 8.84. Now let's try another type of 22 ammo. And now we'll try CCI Stingers, which is 22 long rifle with a 32 grain hollow point. 8.85. Nine forty four, nine forty five, nine fifty seven, nine nineteen, and nine thirty eight. Now, let's try a couple of different types of 25 ammo. Now I have my 25, and this is Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition. That's 25 ACP with a 35 grain FTX projectile, like a ballistic tip. Let's see what kind of velocities we get with this. 850. 875. 846, 822, 823, and 847. Let's try one more type of ammo. Now this is Hornady Custom Ammunition. That's 25 ACP with a 35 grain jacket at hollow point. Let's see what kind of velocities we get with this. 833. 863. 852. 867. 868 and 861. Now, let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are, and it comes with two very important caveats. One, chronographs don't always agree with each other, and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. And two, a lot of the differences you're going to see from one ammunition to the next are going to fall into the category of twice nothing is still nothing. I also want to point out that earlier I mentioned that I was going to make this comparison as fair as possible. When you look at the CCI Minimag ammunition,
that is a high velocity, high performance 22 long rifle ammunition. Our Hornady Critical Defense and our Hornady Custom may not be the most powerful 25 ACP ammunition you can get, but it's still considered to be a high performance 25 ammunition. Also, both of these have 35 grain projectiles, is where the Mini Mag has a 36 grain projectile, one grain of difference in projectile weight. I think we can live with that. So, with all that, the numbers I got were with the Mini Mag, 863 feet per second. When you compare that to the Hornady Custom at 857 feet per second, that's a difference of six feet per second within the variation of one round to the next, not enough difference to make a difference. When you compare the Hornady Critical Defense to the Hornady Custom, you see that the Critical Defense had 843 feet per second. That's 14 feet per second less than the Hornady Custom. Again, within the variation of one round to the next, not enough difference to make a difference. The real difference we see here is with our CCI Stinger ammunition, a mean velocity of 937 feet per second. That's 74 feet per second more than the Mini Mag. Okay, that's a lot more. However, that's with a 32 grain projectile is where the Mini Mag has a 36. So if I did the math right in computing energy foot pounds, we see that the Mini Mag has 59 energy foot pounds. The Stinger has 62, three pounds more. That's not enough to talk about. When you look at the Hornady Critical Defense with 55 and the Hornady Custom with 57, again, not much difference. The difference between the lowest number here, 55, and the highest, 62, is only 7 energy foot-pounds, which percentage-wise might seem like a little bit, but again, twice nothing is still nothing. Now, where these numbers are really going to matter, especially the number we're getting with the Stinger, is that, remember, CCI Mini Mag is primarily designed as a rifle ammunition, and it's made to give good hollow point expansion when fired from a rifle at velocities of 1,200 feet per second or more. Dropping it down to 863, is that going to drop it below expansion threshold? And I've said this many times, but I'll say it again. Hollow points are velocity based. The faster you propel them, the more expansion you'll get up to a point. Propel it too slowly, it'll drop below expansion threshold and you'll get minimal to no expansion. And will we see that propelling a mini mag projectile at this velocity? Now, CCI Stinger ammunition is also primarily designed as rifle ammunition, but at 937, that might still be above expansion threshold. And we'll find out in a moment. Now, by contrast, our 225 ACP ammunitions. They're designed to be fired out of pocket guns with very short barrels. So we would presume that these projectiles are designed to expand at these velocities. Will they? Again, we'll find out in a moment. So when we shoot something that will represent the intended target with these ammunitions at these velocities, will any of them be any better than any of the rest of them? Let's see if we can put that to the test. I know the angle of the sun is not ideal, but at this time of day, at this time of year, in this particular location, this is really what we're stuck with. Okay, to test the effectiveness of our ammunition, we're going to use an analog for a thoracic cavity that's become known as the meat target. And it's leather couch skin followed by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'm going to shoot this from a distance of seven yards, and I'll start with the 22, which is loaded with a combination of the CCI Stingers and the CCI Mini Mags. And a malfunction. Well, I have the meat target disassembled, and the ribs on the front of the target just have 22 caliber holes through them. Our orange lung tissue has 22 caliber holes and damage that isn't that impressive. And our ribs on the back of the target have 22 caliber holes in them. Also, all of our projectiles were stopped either by the ribs on the back of the target or by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Now let's take a close up look at those projectiles. And here's our projectiles, and we see that with both the Stingers and the Mini Mags, hollow point expansion was pretty much non-existent. 
Now I have the 25 loaded with a combination of the Hornady Critical Defense and the Hornady Custom. We have a new meat target set up, and I'll shoot this from 7 yards, and let's see how our results compare. Well, I have this meat target taken apart, and again, the ribs on the front of the target just have 22 caliber holes in them. The damage to the orange lung tissue looks about the same. As far as penetration through the target, it's a little more difficult to judge because some of our projectiles went in at such an angle that they missed the ribs on the back of the target, so some of them did make it to the second or third layer of fleece. However, still, most of them were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. The real issue here is, we presumed that our 25 ACP hollow points and FDX projectiles would be made to expand at the velocities we're getting in our little gun. Let's take a look at our projectiles and see if that was the case. And here's our 25 ACP projectiles. You gotta bear with me, I ended up dropping a couple of them in the snow. But with both the Hornady Custom Hollow Points and the Hornady Critical Defense FDX projectiles, the amount of hollow point expansion was just about non-existent. Now what about the accuracy of little guns? Well the problem with little guns is that they are little and they very often have little sights on them. And so achieving any kind of really good accuracy with these small handguns can be difficult. But is there any inherent difference in accuracy between 22 long rifle and 25 in pocket guns? Well since my 25 and my 22 are identical make and model with identical sights, we should be able to shed some light on them. Now I'll go back 10 yards and I'll shoot the target on your left with the 22 and the target on your right with the 25 and let's see if there's any difference in accuracy. And a malfunction. Here's our group with the 22, and here's our group with the 25, and you can see the group with the 25 is significantly better. Now I have two new targets set up, and I'll repeat that drill from 10 yards, again with the 22 on your left and the 25 on your right, and we'll see if we can confirm those results. And with the 22, we have a better group than we did before, but not so great considering this was my aiming point. With the 25, we have a better group, actually a quite good group, except still, this was my aiming point. Now I found with these Beretta 21As that when I change ammunition in the 22, I get a significant shift in point of impact. With the 25, not so much. And what we're seeing here is, with the group off to the right, that could be just the way I'm looking at the sights under these conditions. But either way, what we can really take from this is that different ammunition may hit in different places and you have to find the right ammunition for your pistol that has non-adjustable sights. And if it hits where you aim it, great. And if not, you have to learn to shift your aiming point. Okay, fair warning, here's the boring part of the presentation where I talk. Also, we've got a real weather front coming in and we're really pressed for time. And I'm not going to be able to refilm this segment several times when I goof it up. So you really are going to have to put up with my Shatner-esque pauses and my very annoying habit of tripping over words. Now there's two things we want to discuss. 
first, as we alluded to at the beginning, a lot of people will say, with 22 being just as powerful as 25, a lot more available and a lot less expensive, why does 25 even exist? Okay, let me see if I can answer that. And it comes with a caveat that, remember, today's presentation is a remake of something we did a while ago. So some of you may have heard just about everything I'm going to say. Sometimes you need a really little gun. And that concept is nothing new. Back in the 1800s, people carried guns, and some of them wanted to carry really little guns. Those over and under derringers were popular, but so were many different types of revolvers in 22 caliber. There were even some that had multiple barrels, and I don't mean rotating barrels like a pepper box. The barrels are static, and your firing pin rotates. And the concept of that was to accommodate the lack of reliability of 22 rimfire ammunition. So if you fire and you get a dud, pull the trigger again, it rotates your firing pin to the adjacent barrel. If you try to fire and you get a squib and it sticks in that barrel, still no problem, pull the trigger again, you rotate to the adjacent barrel and fire that. And this was because 22 rimfire ammunition at that time was not known for a great deal of reliability. Okay, well at the very end of the 1800s, as auto-loading pistols were becoming something that was available, people still wanted to carry really little guns, but some of them wanted to carry a really little auto-loader. And because 22 had the reliability problems it had, and because it's a rimmed cartridge, it wasn't as well suited to the auto-loaders of the time as were other cartridges. So, in 1905, the 25 ACP was invented, which is semi-rimmed and center fire. More conducive to auto loaders because it's semi-rimmed and more reliable. What was also invented at the time were some really little auto loading pistols to shoot that caliber. And so, 25 caught on and it remained popular for many decades. In the 1950s, 1960s, it was still popular. Its popularity started to wane in the 1970s, and today you can still find the ammunition for 25 sometimes, and as far as I know, there are very few firearms still being manufactured in that caliber, and many people would consider 25 pretty much obsolete. Now why is that? There's quite a few reasons, one being that these days you can get some really little 380s. But as far as why 25 really became obsolete, in my opinion, there's two main reasons. One of those is the Gun Control Act of 1968. Now, I can't quote you chapter and verse, but the Gun Control Act of 1968 did a few things. One of those was that it put some taxes and fees on the manufacture of firearms, and it created an economic situation where companies like Colt, could no longer make really little guns like 25s and bring them to the market for a price people were willing to pay. The other reason is that the Gun Control Act of 1968 banned the importation of guns under a certain size. So companies like Browning could no longer import guns like this one. This one was made in 1967. And so with the inability to import some good quality guns and domestic manufacturers economically not really being able to make them, making 25 caliber pistols became the bailiwick of companies like Raven Arms and a few others. And so there's a couple of generations of people that associate 25 ACP with cheap inferior guns. Now, another thing that really rendered the 25 obsolete was in the late 70s, you saw the introduction of some new generation, very reliable, very powerful 22 long rifle ammunitions like CCI Stingers and Remington Yellow Jackets and a few others, and a new generation of really small guns to shoot them. So with that, the 25 just went by the wayside. Now I hope that cleared up why the 25 exists and why it was popular for a long time. 
And that brings us to a recap of the results we got today. Okay. We saw that when we did our chronograph analysis, that when it comes to shooting either of these calibers in pocket guns, the difference between 22 and 25 wasn't very much. And side note, on a couple of previous occasions, I have shot CCI Stingers through pocket-sized 22 pistols, and we did get hollow point expansion, although we didn't today. Now that was a different kind of pistol that did have at least a little bit more barrel and it looks like the different make and model and different barrel length made just enough difference to make the difference. But with the Beretta 21A I was using today, no, we did not get hollow point expansion. And so the results in our meat target were with the 25 and the Hornady Custom hollow points and the Hornady Critical Defense XTP projectiles and the CCI mini mags and the CCI stingers, we didn't see any hollow point expansion. And so it might lead you to the conclusion that if you had a 25, I'm certainly not recommending you get one, but if you have one, you might want to just use the 50 grain full metal jacket round nose. However, if you do that, shop wisely because the velocity we saw with the Remington green and white box, I've seen other brands of 50 grain round nose 25 that give you velocities of about 100 feet per second less than that. So, caveat emptor. Now, what we also saw was that when it comes to accuracy, at least with the guns I have, the 25 seemed to perform a little better. And with some of your other pocket 22s, like Ruger LCP and caliber 22 long rifle, it has enough of a sight that I can see the sights and shoot it a little bit better, but it also has non-adjustable sights, so sometimes the ammunition doesn't hit where I'm aiming. But for me, with the small 22s that I have and the 25s that I have, I've gotten more accuracy out of the 25. Now, when it comes to reliability, today's generation of 22 ammunition even though it's rimfire, is pretty reliable, but it's still not going to be as reliable as centerfire. And as far as the reliability of the guns, did you notice that we had several malfunctions with the 22? Now with the 25, I did have one failure to fire, but I think that had something to do with, with I didn't have the slide lock completely. So we did have one malfunction with the 25, but quite a few with the 22. And that, is going to send me off on a tangent that in my experience when you have full-size handguns that are auto loaders in caliber 22 long rifle handguns like my Ruger Mark III, my Beretta M922, my Smith & Wesson M&P 22, that those handguns are very reliable but also in my experience when you have pocket guns in caliber 22 long rifle such as my Glock Model 44, my Ruger LCP, and my Beretta 21A, the reliability just isn't there. While by contrast, when I have pocket guns in caliber 25 ACP, like Colt 1908, Baby Browning, and Beretta 21A, the reliability is there. And so, for me, a real bottom line to all of this is, given my experience and the guns available to me, when I need a really little gun, given the choice between 22 long rifle and 25 ACP, I'm going to choose a 25. Your experience may be different, the guns available to you may be different, and so your choices may be different. So, I hope that cleared up a lot of things. I hope today's remake gave you more information put in a better format than the presentation we did previously. As usual, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the 22 Long Rifle versus 25 ACP in a pocket gun video.